Maestro, let's get ready to rumble. Rumble, 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 rumble. Friend of mine, very close friend of mine, uh, thinks I'll be treated like a rock star. I'm not entirely sure that's going to be the case. I didn't. I made friends and some enemies last time due to comments about my not understanding science and so forth and getting on the wrong side of particular people. So I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be a rock star when I go down there, but who knows? I don't actually like the start of conferences. The actual awkward getting into phase of everything really is really quite terrible. And you can tell by the way that I'm not talking particularly fluently or eloquently, uh, which indicates that there is something wrong there. And I'm just a little bit nervous. It's strange. Once I actually get into the flow of things, especially when I'm presenting, no nerves whatsoever. But the wait, the wait for these things is always actually quite, quite terrible. So, conference is on. About to get ready to go downstairs and listen to the first few talks whilst I prepare myself mentally for my talk. Because I'm talking about climate change scepticism, and there's a prior talk on climate change scepticism, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to utilise a lot of that material in my talk by just referring back to it. So I can focus more on the first half, which is dealing with the conceptual issues, and then deal with the climate change stuff in a far more offhand way, because I can just refer back to the previous speaker, but whether that's going to work is another matter entirely. Uh, I suppose we'll find out shortly. Yeah, so I just came back from the talk. It went really actually quite well. Uh, no one there as controversial as I thought it might be if I talked about climate change scepticism. or seemed to think it was all ra rather acceptable to put it forward as a conspiracy theory, which is an improvement on last year when there were lots of climate change sceptics around the place. Uh, got bundled up by a UFO slash conspiracy theorist, but who also doesn't believe that the moon landings were faked or such like. So it's a weird bundle of belief in one thing but not belief in another, which shows it's actually particularly weird at all. And I'm talking 19 to the dozen because I'm just so tired and want to go to bed. I always get this after a talk. I just need the thump, and I really can't thump. There's more talks in a few minutes' time. Well, I've just received a bad review. Yes, I went down to the, the drinks afterwards to talk to people and get up to date and swap contact details and the like. When Nathan, who's organising next year's Skeptics Conference, which promises to be a rather exciting affair, uh, I won't say anything more about it because A, you say something about it doesn't occur, then loss of the dream, and B, he probably doesn't want people talking about what he's going to do. But the exciting thing, and I say exciting and depressing thing, and tragic thing, and pathos, and bathos, and music, and nights, and everyone wants to have a maid, and I don't know where I'm going with this. Stephen Sondheim, obviously. Whatever the case is, uh, a little more of the hand to the circulation. I'm trying to make the video more exciting. Woo! Except I'm not really doing it particularly well to be doing that. Whop. I'll probably edit that out. I might do a sort of jump cut editing for this particular thing. Anyway, so what happened is that I was talking with Nathan, as one does, and he said, you suck, Matthew. I said, really? Why is that? And he said, well, an old lady came up to me and said that you sucked. And I went, oh, that's interesting. Did you explain why? And apparently I'm too young and not filled with practical talents or practical wisdom or just experience to be able to give talks at a skeptics conference. You know, despite the fact that I'm doing my PhD in the epistemology of conspiracy theory, to have a lifelong interest in such things, teach critical thinking skills, so probably am really a more qualified skeptic than most of the people at the conference. I'm not good enough to give a presentation there. When I come back in my 40s or 50s, that will be fine. And this is tragic for multiple reasons. One, the skeptics are an aging population who are in danger of dying out and they need new blood. Uh, two, the last time new blood came down, which was me and a few other young people, much younger than me, I'm 32, these were people in their late 20s came along, we all got very, very, very bad reception from the elder skeptics. They just don't like us young ones exhibiting skepticism. Apparently it's just not natural. Uh, it may sound like it's going to be more than two reasons. So, yes, an ageing population, they don't treat us particularly well. But 
Even so, surely the quality of my talk was the important thing, I said to Nathan. He said, oh yes, apparently your talk was fine. You're just too young to give it. So next year, it looks like I'll be giving a talk again next year, I'll have to grey my hair and grow a beard to give all the affectation of being older, so I'm suddenly acceptable to this strange old woman who has really bizarre views about things. As you can see, I'm a bit passionate about this because I think she's a moron. I don't know who she is, so I won't be able to bundle her up next time and cause her epistemic pain, but I will think about it. I came away from the last one having vicious thoughts about a certain industrial chemist, now I'm going to come away from this one with vicious thoughts about old ladies. Which sounds a bit sad, really. Vicious thoughts of old ladies. We should fade out to some lovely... Actually, at this point in time, I really like to fade out to the ending of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's a lovely planet. The pity it gets, gets destroyed. I'm not really Stephen Fry. I'm much younger, slightly trimmer, possibly just as camp, actually, truth be told. But I'm also not the voice of everything in the UK, so it's another matter entirely.